Who's, I'm one of those people of, wow, all right, move on. Mm. Huh. Well, since, since we're on the subject, um, you remember at some point in the last couple of weeks, I said to remind me to tell you the story of Nixter next time we recorded. Yes. So, okay, so you know about Radio Free Cybertron. Hmm. That we were like the first Transformers podcast before the word podcast actually existed. Yeah. So there was there was this other dude, screen name Nixter, mm-hmm. um, who had listened to one or two episodes of Radio Free Cybertron and decided, hey, I'd like to do this too. He actually said basically that in IRC one day. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I had talked to him at some point after he uh, started doing his own show, which was terrible, by the way. Um, Mm. And, you know, yeah, he hung out in the IRC channel that uh, I spent a lot of time in, Mm. um, which that'll be an important thing later on in the story. But um, so, you know, he had his political leanings, as everybody does. Mm. He was fairly vocal about them. Mm. And even though I don't think his show lasted an especially long time. He continued to do things online. Um, after a while, such things as putting out um, bounties on the heads of abortion doctors. Right. On his personal website. Uh-huh. The, uh huh. The FBI got interested when he put, you know, like a $1.5 million bounty on some doctor's head. Uh-huh. Now, mind, mind you, he didn't have $1.5 million. Yeah, it makes you wonder what he'd do when the murderer actually came for the money. Because it seems like a murderer isn't somebody you'd want to stiff. No, not at all. No. So, you know, the FBI went to his house and impounded all his computers and such. Mm. Took him into custody, certainly. Um, And in the course of the investigation, found thousands upon thousands of pieces of child pornography. Right. (laughs) Well... I uh, th- guess we know why he wanted there to be more babies. You're not the first person to make that joke either. <laughs> um, so it's an easy one. Um, well, yeah. Okay, so and the, the greatest part is his wife was pregnant at the time he got arrested for it too. Um, wow. But no. So in the IRC channel, you know, there's people ranging in ages i was about 15 at the time and there was um a couple girls in there around the same age Mm -hmm. and of course he was married and had kid on the way he was you know at least in his late 20s yeah and he had made i mean even before there was context he made what would be seen as uh semi-creepy comments towards some of them yeah. But after we found out about that, it just got really, really icky. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think I think everybody who knew him, their favorite part of the story was um, when he was brought before the judge for sentencing, he broke down crying. Ah. Uh, that is nice. Uh, and he was, of course barred from ever using a computer or the internet again in his life. Uh-huh. Now, mind you, this was in, like, 2002. Yeah. That we found out all of this had happened. You can't really survive without it these days. Well, I'm sure you can. It would just suck. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but... That's... I've, I've met a few fucking weird-ass people. Did I ever tell you about the dominatrix that stalked me? Uh, was that the one who put the collar on you? No, no, that was one at a LARP. She was actually nice. I met a lot of dominatrixes. Well, uh, see, that's kind of my point. It's hard to keep up. Yeah. The ones that are nice, you can usually deal with, because if you tell them, I'm not into that, they go, okay, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's the end of it. Right. Because, you know, I'm not into that, and that's, you know, all that there should be said. Sure. But, um, you know, so there was this woman. Okay. First of all, I was 18, she was 35. Mm-hmm. I was talking to her and her 17-year-old boyfriend. Now, she was completely insane for the start, but apparently I needed to play relationship counselor to her and her boyfriend because she didn't know how to keep her shit together. 
Okay. So I would literally end up having to call these people and talk to them over the phone. Now, I'd known them from essentially an online role play. <laughs> so I was pretty sure I did not know them well enough. So I gave them my cell phone number because I could always get a new fucking cell phone. Sure. So, you know, I called them her from that a few times and, uh, you know, talked to them and whatever. Eventually, because her boyfriend was actually from a very uh, funny thing. He was an extremely avid Transformers fan oh. and he was I can't remember his name exactly, but he at the time had the in uh, the unfortunate email address, which he did not know about the other connotations for it. Transfan 69. You know, so, that sounds really familiar. I wish I could remember his name. I would tell you. But um, he was really big into Transformers. He was from a rich family, so he had fucking millions of them. <laughs> Most of which were still in their original boxes that he would never open. He bought two copies, one to own and one to shelf. Uh-huh. Or if he couldn't find it, just one to shelf. But um, anyway, they ended up breaking up because she crazy. <laughs> And it's one of those situations you run into a lot with teenage guys, which was, she was his first lay, he fell in love with her on the spot, uh, which was a mistake, so they ended up being together for way longer than they needed to, hmm. which was at all. So, so yes, uh, they end up breaking up, and I get a call from her in the middle of the night, she's crying, I talk to her. I'm like, yeah, everything's going to be okay, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're an adult woman. Get over it. It was basically what it all ended up boiling down to. And she apparently took that to mean that she needed to be with me now. Um, no. And you left the game. I think I lagged out. Whoops. But yeah, that was, um... But yeah, so she started sending me the most wonderfully bipolar text messages. And oh, I've those actually, are always fun. Yeah, and I, I met a lot of people with bipolar disorder, so it's not like I'm making fun of it. I mean, this was obviously a thing with her that I had not picked up on. So I'd get a text message at like 3 a.m. that said, I love you, I want to be with you, which is immediately followed by, call me back or I'll fucking kill your family. And, like, and I'm like, she doesn't know where I live. Uh, she doesn't, you know, need, she doesn't know how to track me down. The cell phone number can't be tracked at this point because it was early in the internet. It was very difficult to accomplish that sort of thing. Right. I mean, she might be able to find my name, but our phone number and address have always been unlisted in things like telephone books. Yeah. So back in those days, the internet it was actually very easy to remain anonymous. Sure. Ish. Well, Ish. You know, unless you got a hold of someone's, like, social security number, then you could still find out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it ended up with me just going to my mom and going, hey, mom, I kind of need a new phone number. Hmm. And that was the end of it. That was the entire end of it. I mean, she basically, the last time she texted me, she was like, if you don't talk to me, I'll kill myself. And I remember texting her back. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> because I really didn't care anymore. Hmm, like, is that something? Hmm. Uh, that was the early, yeah, that is a village of some sort. Or something. But yeah, that was well in the early days of the internet from, from my point of view. I think it was like 16 at the time. Okay. So, you know, that's almost 15 years ago. Or no, I was 18 at the time. Damn it. Numbers! <laughs> I know, this is just fucking... There's something in there. Thank God. Alright. But yeah, that was when I learned to stop talking to people I met online. Uh, or at least giving out any personal information. Well, yeah. And I actually have a friend who I have known online... Well, two friends I have known online for... I think about three years longer than Rob's known you. Oh. 
And I'd like to meet them eventually. They both live in Boston, and they're really cool people. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things of, eh, I'm not sure if I want any of them. Yeah, you know, I, I won't give my phone number out until I've met them, which is an odd statement. Huh. But, um, actually, you know, it, it's weird because I, I always viewed them as younger siblings. So it was extremely weird to me when, uh, or whenever they would talk to me about, you know, growing up and various things going on in their lives, and I'll be like, shit, when huh. did that happen? <laughs> When did you turn into a person? But. No, they're cool. One of them actually went to school for uh, video game design. Oh. I think he's designing medical webs uh, websites now, actually. But um, still, his. Apparently, his uh, graduating, whatever the hell you call it, like, thesis was. A uh, was to design a game the length of Final Fantasy VI for the Super Nintendo, hmm. and he did in you know two D you know old style sprites with art he created himself. And from what I understand, he got full marks. Nice. That's like a neat. You're probably way smarter than I am. I'd feel really dumb meeting you. <laughs> uh, I feel justified though. I was apparently or I was reading a um reading a article earlier that was explaining that some people's brains are literally just incapable of higher level math. It, it apparently does not mean that they are stupid. It just means that your brain does not function in a way that would allow you to do, say, algebra. Well, good luck convincing anybody else of that. I was say, well, if researchers at MIT say it, I'm going to believe them at the least. Yeah, but good luck convincing other people of that. True. That was that was what I meant. Yeah. Well, you know, that's my excuse from now on. My father agreed with it. He's like, yeah, that part of my brain doesn't function either. <laughs> uh, but... God damn, it's dry in here, the problem. Oh, bees. I hope when you befriend them, they don't instantly become hostile. Or if mm. you're planning to befriend them. But, um... Uh... uh. Then I've got a friend who apparently just broke up with his uh, girlfriend of 10 years. Well, that is... must be a little bit sad. Um, He's kind of over it because, as he said, he, you know. All right, I met him. I met his girlfriend. They're both wonderful people separately. Uh-huh. All right. They both are... They are, uh, they're my friends. I love them both. They are both completely undateable except for each other. <laughs> I mean, the fact that, you know, like, his girlfriend, or his ex, really cute, really nice figure, really nice smile, horribly demanding. Uh. Well, like, all right, the job economy is, or job market's pretty much fucked at the moment. Yeah. Especially where they live in a very small town in the middle of nowhere. Right. She's able to get a job because she's working, you know, in or as a salesperson in a public place where a cute girl with a nice smile will hire a lot of people. Yeah. And get a lot of customers. He is a pudgy white dude with, you know, always five o'clock shadow. Mm-hmm. It is nearly impossible for him to find a job. She, uh, and, you know, it's true. The only time I have ever seen her happy with him was when he had a job that made exactly the same amount of money she did, and he had exactly the same hours. <laughs> that was the only time I've ever seen her happy with his uh, with him. And when he started working more hours, she suddenly got really angry. Because he was making more money than her, and of course, they weren't... I think you might have lagged out. Nope, you're moving. Well, I just uh, ate a berry, so... Oh, yeah, that'd do it. Uh, but, um, but, yeah. Second he started making more money and working more hours, she was angry. Because he was making more money than her, and they didn't have as much time to spend together. Uh-huh. 
which you think would be a complaint, except what they do when they got home is much like what me and Angel do, which is sit at their computers and ignore each other for four hours. <laughs> this doesn't mean we don't care about each other. It just means that we want to be on the internet. Hmm. So yeah, he's basically sick of it. She's sick of him, and I gotta admit, he doesn't... Look oh. at this tree. Oh, wow. It... Well, look at the... Ah, look at the shaft. I fell down the hill. But, um... But, yeah. That's kind of a... I, I just really wish I could tell them, neither of you are worth the trouble. Huh. You, know, you should really think of reconciling because he's been willing to put up with your bullshit for, you know, 10 years. You've been able to put up with him quitting jobs the second people start, you know, treating him like shit because he won't stay in a job if people start treating him like garbage. Mm -hmm. He has quit many a job because of that. And I can't blame him considering how some of them treated him. Right. But yeah, so you know, you know, you you put up with that to some extent. You two really need to work this out. Hmm. You are, you know, both. You are both not good. I mean, like I said, those friends—they're really nice people. And it's just that you know, together, well, date uh, dating-wise, one of the four or five times they broke up, I went out clubbing with her and a friend. And the friend was like, oh, were, were you going to ask her out? No. <laughs> no, I was not. But uh, the funny part is, of course, that I've actually been told by one or two people. Actually, I should say three or four people that uh, relationship wise, I am more dateable than her as a cute large. There you go, she is even though she's a cute, large chested female. Huh. Uh, you have more positive qualities as a fat guy with no job prospects <laughs> who sits in a chair for 12 hours out of the day. <laughs> you are more dateable. I'm like, huh. <laughs> What's that say? I'm... Of course, kind of funny because Angel keeps having those... She She only rarely has girl moments like that. Like, where she gets jealous or anything. Uh-huh. When she does, they always catch me out of left field. Because <laughs> you're not expecting it. Yeah. She's, like, completely reasonable and rational 98% of the time. Then, like, every now and then, it'll just be crazy. And then she usually pauses and realizes what she said is crazy and apologizes. <laughs> like, huh. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, I, I don't know. Apparently, I also have this problem where I flirt and don't know it. Uh. I mean, I don't think Angel's ever actually seen me do that. <laughs> but other people comment on it because when I talk to women, I'm not shy. Right. Regardless of whether a woman is attractive or not, I'm usually happy, upbeat, extremely friendly. And I don't think I'm flirting with them because I'm not interested in them. Right. Right. That I, I have a two-position mind, which is basically single when dating. Mm -hmm. And if I'm dating, I'm not interested in anyone. Right. You know, and, and it's actually happened in the past where I ended up in a couple compromising situations. Where I'm like, sorry, my, I'm not actually reacting to you because I'm with someone else. I am that monogamous. You know, now, please go away. I don't like being cornered. Huh. But, you know... But, yeah, it's just one of those situations. God damn, we keep finding the boring places. Yeah. But, um... But, yeah, I'm... I'm there's a village to the west, though? Probably not anything there. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah, so I, I apparently flirt with them and don't realize it because I'm just being honest and friendly and, I guess, confident. Mm. Which people assume is flirting. Like, I'm just trying to be nice. Give me a break. <laughs> Can a brother just get along? <laughs> Apparently no. not. No. Okay, because either I don't do it around Angel or she doesn't notice. Because when she's around, I pay attention to her. Right. As you should. Yeah. 
Well, you know, we're, she's sane, but I'm still not stupid. When your girlfriend's around, you give her attention. Yeah. Or else life gets very difficult. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm... Uh, I just... Yeah, it's been a weird week. I, I... I bet. I have been having... Well, with, you know, Rob going, I've been staying up a lot later and sleeping a lot less. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still trying to catch up on that. And cheer wine has helped. Uh, sort of. It's helped me be awake during the day. Well. I don't suppose it's actually helped me in reality, though. No. But, um, no, I, um, I've been completely brain gone. So, I, I don't know, this is, like, I fucking think I'm just decompressing during recording this. Because I've needed to talk. And you haven't had an opportunity yeah, especially because Angel just got uh, promoted to full-time. Oh, cool. Which means she's going to be working way more hours. Well, yeah, but still money and yeah. benefits. Oh, yeah. She... Better benefits. I guess yeah, she already way better some. benefits. Way better benefits, actually. And more hours, so yeah, it's well, better yeah, benefits. That's, that's at... what I was saying, money and better benefits. Uh, and I think it's better benefits at close to the same price. Hmm. So I think she'll only pay a few extra dollars a month very nice but it's one of those things of i don't know if we've ever told you uh well i'm sure rob has told you it's august and it's cursed for us yes uh that he mentions that at least a couple times every year yeah and you know i made sure to make the point for him this year that no matter what else at least this august had you know convention yeah yeah and that's doing well for him i think i've got a tooth that's gonna have to be pulled this month oops so, we. This is why. That's a frustrating thing. It is a congenital bad teeth thing. Mm hmm. I mean, my entire. Or my mom's entire family, aside from her, had to have all their teeth pretty much yanked. Uh. So. I, I took care of my teeth, and they're just fucking rotten out. Well, some of them are. Now, tell and me, do you have, like, dry mouth, generally? God, no. Okay. I actually have way more saliva than I should. Okay. <laughs> I I know this because I feel like a fucking St. Bernard. Where it's, yeah, I just I will sometimes realize that my mouth is more than half full of spit. It's rather horrifying. Yeah, that's a little awkward. Yeah. And you lagged out again, apparently. Apparently. I wonder what the hell. I'm not... Did I leave something on? It doesn't look like I left anything on. Oh, well. But, yeah. So, that's that's good, but, of course, it means that I'll see her less. So, yeah. now, now whenever anyone's like, hey, do you want to do blah? No, no fuck you. Huh. But we'll probably be able to record uh, Horrible People Play this Thursday night, if you're interested. That's good. Yeah. I think I'm just about out. Yeah, I actually am. I, I figured out how to use the scheduled uploader, so... Uh. I've been taking advantage of that. Unfortunately, it means that I'm having to go through, like, a week later and going, Oh, time to update my playlists. Hmm. I can tell you this much, though. I'm I'm kind of done with another Century episode. I realized I've been playing it for about four months. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to play it anymore. I really don't. Well, it's just about I stopped watching it. Yeah. I was trying to now play Gundam Crossfire, but after one day of that, I can tell you I'm never playing it again. I watched that first video today. I had recorded three. The fourth one disappeared. I don't know what happened to it, but it just wasn't there anymore when I was done. Uh. So I was like, nope, nope, nope. I mean, the game... It's like trying to control a drunken toddler. <laughs> uh, if you can imagine what a child who has just barely learned to walk is like, now put them in knee-high, or, you know, like, calf-high boots. So that it's almost impossible for them to bend their legs. And then try and make them turn a sharp corner. <laughs> that is what it is like with every movement in that game. Uh, right now I'm having, uh, 
trying to figure out what the hell to do next moment. Mm. And I started recording a couple things because I felt like it, but, uh, uh nearing 2,000 videos. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm trying to, I'd like to do something interesting. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, well, I've got no money for new games or anything like that. Uh, what can I do? I could try going back to Amnesia again, but I desperately do not want to. Well, that seems like a good reason not to, then. Of course, I could always do some of the Amnesia custom levels that wouldn't be so bad, like the My Little Pony ones. Yeah. Which are actually quite frightening. <laughs> Which, you know, is part of the reason that they're amusing, but, um... I, but yeah, that was still one of those games. I, every time I look at it, even when I'm like, maybe I should play that for fun. No. No. Hmm. Ah, but uh, I, I'd like to do something. I keep th I kept thinking I would get a copy of or save up and get a copy of uh, Saints Row the Fourth when it came out for the channel. Well, like I said, when I was playing the third, I was just walking through uh, the horror house and past a wall full of penises <laughs> next to statues of penises and a guy with, you know, a ball gag in his mouth, you know, bent over. And I'm like, you know, I'm not that sure, but this video might get age restricted <laughs> or these videos might get age restricted. And that is kind of a death sentence on YouTube. Because the second you get, you know, any major copyright strike or anything, or, you know, an age restriction, well, that was farther than I thought. Uh, but the second you get that, you can't, you know, basically can't monetize or anything anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I should probably avoid this. Maybe. And, of course, I can't do Grand... Or I'd get and do Grand Theft Auto 4, but then Rockstar would fucking flip their shit and get my channel shut off, which they like to do. Hmm. Like, fuck it, maybe Pokemon. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I've played enough Pokemon in my lifetime. Eh. Apparently you can never play enough Pokemon. Yeah, I actually have a friend who has just started getting into Pokemon. Well, a little bit late, but... Eh, he... I, I, he did not like the graphics in some of the early generations. But and... I think he's missing the entire point. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he is a man who makes no, uh, no, uh, basically does not obscure the fact that he thinks all retro or two-dimensional games look awful. Okay. I and mean, it's just straight up a, he believes that two-dimensional gaming is bad and it needs to go away. Well, not needs to go away, but it just needs to stop being something people are still doing. So he's one of those wrong people. Well, yes, from my opinion. The worst part is he is a in very intelligent, very you know sensible person, and it's you know an opinion, so you can't argue with him. But he's still oh, sure wrong. Sure, you can. Well, you know, it's like a friend said, you know, or when he said, you know, you can't be, or your opinion can't be wrong. And my friend, uh, my friend pointed out, racism is an opinion. <laughs> so yes, opinion can be wrong. I'm kind of, a, I can't think of a better argument than that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, he he's, I I don't argue about him. Apparent or don't argue with it about him because I like him. He's a great guy. I get along with him on so many other things. And you know, he's just. You know, he's a generally weird person. I get along with weird people. As long Obviously. As we yeah, as long as they're weird in nice ways. Mm. Like, um... I don't know. He, he's, he's cool. He runs a lot of panels at major anime conventions. And he's very well known for his uh, Shibari panels. Do what now? Uh, Japanese rope bondage. Oh... He's actually trained in it and runs a lot of panels, usually with models. Uh-huh. Well, no uh, one's popular. Yeah. 